Welcome to Snakes and Otters, a pointless discussion of eternal questions. Get ready, we're about to live in your head rent-free. Hello, Otterites. This is episode 182. I am Martin. And I'm Robert. And I'm Francis sitting in the captain's chair, but we are not alone this time. There's aliens? No. Oh. Although we, well, I don't know. Are you, sir? I don't, I don't think know. so. I don't okay. think I don't think he's a lizard person. No, uh, no, 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 no. We are now that we're discovery free. By now. <laughs> with, with as much as he with as much work as he's had done, they That's right, as much as he's been cut open. Yeah. 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 They had discovered if he was a lizard person. That's right. Uh-huh. Okay. Yes, because we who were the three musketeers are now in the great tradition of Alexander Dumas, four musketeers. Mm-hmm. Yes. Technically there always were four. It's yes. Just, yes. Yeah. So, uh, so yes, but we have with us today. That's right, the great Marcus Aurelius, who you might remember from a couple years back. Uh, we did our special hoopa mm-hmm. uh with discussing of all manner of things. We just went wild, dogs and cats living mm-hmm. together, mass hysteria, and it was still one of our most popular episodes. Because it was. It I don't was know if we totally told you that cool. it is one of the most popular episodes, mm-hmm. That's most right. downloads. That's right, yeah, right, because it was awesome. So yes. he's back with us again for a, for a snootful of whatever we're drinking these days. Uh, so we welcome you back, uh, dear friend of long acquaintance. Thank uh, you. Yes, the emperor has arrived. Yes, since you were and he's here, wearing clothes, fortunately. Uh, mm-hmm. you know, obviously, you've gone through the, the, the liver replacement surgeries. A couple. Yeah. A couple, <laughs> yes. Uh, and, of course, we have kept the listeners uh, abreast oh, of all that. Right. Whenever yeah, yeah, right, yeah. there's been oh, good news, we've uh, let them know. So you are always uh, uh, on everybody's mind uh, anyways. But uh, we do like to let the listeners know that you're doing okay. Good. So, and a big welcome to Studio M, as we call it. Mm-hmm. Studio M. Yes, on the 30th floor of the Nakatomi Plaza. Uh, yes, just down the hall from Ellis, behind the waterfall. Behind the waterfall, mm-hmm. yes. And uh, don't follow uh, Takagi after lunch. That's right. Well, that's the other <laughs> he likes kimchi. <coughs> I keep forgetting that last part. Yeah. Yes. Well, uh, that's a relatively new addition to the... Uh, <laughs> To no, the, to the shtick. Keeping everyone on their <laughs> To <toes>. the shtick. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. <laughs> <laughs> to the shtick. Yeah. All right, guys. I mean, uh, I, have, have we run out of steam on philosophers yet? Not because, yet. Not we can yet. never run out of steam on philosophers. That's right, because we are at the last episode of our long, series. Yeah, long reach yeah. Uh, of series of philosophers. I mean, we've we didn't do them all, but it's all been modern philosophy, more mm-hmm. or less. I mean, we dipped our toe well, into modern is a relative term, very relative. I because mean, well, this is the first twentieth century. Philosophy. That's correct. Yeah, and the first American, and, and the, the first, first American, American, which yeah. is one of the reasons I chose it to kind of in this out with because it kind of takes us up not quite to the present day but you know at least to the the previous century uh and he was an, an influential influential thinker uh is is if you gentlemen have done any of your research which i'm not of taking, course we have i'm not taking that for granted that's for sure <laughs> but uh it's uh john dewey is the man who does it and just to let you know this is not the guy with the dewey decimal system mm-hmm. uh much as a lot of for some people reason people get think he did that. I'm not sure why other than the last name. That's like a whole different dude. That's right. Absolutely. Another galaxies away. We're not... We're right. Not and it's not like, you know, there's only one or two Deweys. There's plenty of Deweys that, okay. that you could talk about. One of the reasons I think that that... Thomas happened, Dewey? Tom, Tom Dewey, yes. That's correct. Exactly. And I think that what we're talking about here, the reason that this is so uh, easily under, misunderstood perhaps is because John Dewey was extremely tight into education. Yes. And, yes. The, and of course, all of us learned our Dewey Decimal System in the educational system long way back, so for some reason we've kind of put ourselves together on that. But, uh, no, John Dewey was an influential philosopher in New York, and we're going to talk a little bit about him here uh, uh, in the United States uh, from uh, that way back. Uh, in the previous century, it's kind of hard for us, born in the previous century, to think of it as, uh, as being that old, but here we are, we're going to... Uh, uh, going to talk a little bit about him. Uh, 18, born in 1859, dies in 1952. Okay, just to kind of get you that perspective in there. He's a, That's pre, a long life. pre-war guy then, basically. He, he, he is, the he is, of his career is yeah. kind of turn of the century to the war. That is correct, yeah. So you, you would find his mindset very similar to the World War One era. So that's... Well, of, yeah, I mean, even yeah, probably even before, because if he was mm-hmm. born in uh, fifty nine, I mean, he was forty one at the turn of the right, 19th absolutely, and he, and he was, so he's would have been well established then, very much so. And the reason, and as we've discussed many, many times on this on this show, is that there is a distinct intellectual change with World War One, yes, in, in the world, and he is pre that, 
and yet he adapts very, very well afterwards. He's still looked on to by the time of his death, and even in the 1930s, after his retirement, he is seen as a father philosopher figure. Uh, and a, I don't want to use the word modernist because it has uh, connotations that I don't want to bring in here, but he is one of the first modern philosophers who takes where we left off last time with John Stuart Mill, because he's sort of... Maybe Vernon Hill. It may burn out. That's right. Uh, he's not a contemporary of Mill. He's the no, next no, generation no. after that. But he takes Mill's ideas not direct, not directly. He's not a he's not a successor uh, to utilitarianism. But he's more of somebody. His his uh, he's a, an educator first. He is a proponent of, of of what we would consider modern day liberalism, meaning not political liberalism. Although he would probably see some uh, some things akin to that. He is what we would consider to be what he calls a pragmatist. Yes. Because he really has two careers. He, he has a, a real philosophy writing career. Yes, he does. But he also has this career as, as this educational proponent. Primarily public education. That's right, yes. Uh, well, he's also make that, uh, no. got some uh, distinct works in the area of psychology as well. Yes, that's right. So he, he's definitely a, a multi-discipline uh, Kind of guy. Which is one of the reasons I, I find him so attractive to talk about is because this is one of those, you know, towering intellects. We're all about towering yeah, intellects. Yeah, classic Holly man. Absolutely. We, I mean, we, we ourselves consider ourselves towering intellects, so of course we're attracted to those who are. Mm -hmm. And polymaths. And polymaths, that's right. That's yes, right, yes, exactly. Yes, yes. Uh, Renaissance man, even though that's, you know, this is much later than that. The modern Renaissance man yes. in many respects. Well, you know, you can make the argument that Renaissance is still going on. Absolutely, yeah. So that's that's kind of where I'm I'm going with that is that that's very much the same thing. He's all about learning. In fact, and that's there's yeah. the, there's the two things that go together. I looked at uh, a handful of quotes before. I actually did a little bit of research on the quote side. Wow, he did yeah. some research. Great. Yeah. Well, you know, every once in a while. That's right. Um, and uh, almost all of the ones at the top of the list uh, were education, right? Uh, yes. Oriented yes. learning, and which again, right in our wheelhouse. Right, right. Now, very much so, and he's the father of so much of that. The, the the two actually tie together very very well, both his educational side and his philosophical side, because his philosophy of pragmatism is about he's a believer, believe this or not, of a pure democracy. Mm -hmm. He thinks, and this is set. This is kind of meant to bring us full circle back around yeah. where we started with Hobbes, which is the absolute antithesis of that. When we go through the centuries, we find ourselves in a position where the only true ethical, those are his, that's his words, uh, way of governance, of living together, is that of a pure democracy. He was not even a fan of representative democracy, with the caveat, though, that everyone must be fully educated. You have to. See, that's, that's, the, yes, yes, that's the piece. Yes. You have to have education and in he, order to have he democracy. He thought democracy needed to go beyond even governance. That's correct. That basically everything <coughs> we participate in should be democratized and direct democracy. That's right. So everybody votes on what's for dinner. Yes. Okay. And when you work for a company, you get to vote on what the company does. So does the rabbit still get to be armed when the two wolves and the rabbit vote for what's for dinner? I mean, you know. So that's what well, you see there yes, in lies. That, the, and that's why I'm getting my axe handle out of the golf bag. So sort of swinging at this piñata. Well, you know, pure democracy is, well, pure and absolute democracy. There's pure democracy, yeah. which means we vote. Right. And one man, one vote as opposed to representative. Correct. Mm -hmm. But, you know, when we go to the point where we're talking about absolute democracy, where everything... First of all, what you've done is you've created a societal committee. Exactly, yeah. And as we know, a camel is a horse designed by a committee. Exactly. Yes. But also, uh, democracy, in, in that sense, this is where I would agree. That this is where he, he falls down. Right. In that real democracy, as opposed to a republic or representative democracy, real democracy can only work in very small groups. Mm -hmm. That's very pl That's Plato. Yeah, from I mean, the very just, beginning. you cannot have 300 million people voting on what's going to be in the next spending bill in Congress. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's how he would For one thing, that. it'll be a $300 trillion bill uh, because everybody will want some, either that or be zero because nobody will vote for anything. Right. And, but in his, of course, it, he's got an answer to that, obviously, as the, the intellect that he was. Yeah. It's education solves that. 
That's uh, full yes, education and an educated multiple public. Multiple generations of compulsory education, and I don't see us really getting any smarter. Well, that, well, that, in many that, cases, that, I think we're getting a lot dumber. I mean, I watched ten minutes of the Mass Singer the other night, and I was stunned by. Like you and the wife in a little BDSM there going into the you know little I was trying to escape, I mean, was trying to escape the living room and mm -hmm. I guess I was tied up fooling with a dog or something. I was well, like, and you got subjected to well, yeah. Jenny McCarthy was wearing a pretty nice dress. I will say that. That's yes. the only thing that I, I saw actually is because he was on when we were out over there at uh, at the in laws' house, and I'm thinking, she, I mean, and I don't particularly like Jenny McCarthy, but yeah, she looks pretty nice. But that's the only thing about that thing. That's the only thing he remembers about that entire three-hour... Uh, that's exactly right. Uh, yeah, so a, a white dress and... Uh, Parts it, of it missing. And it, yes, it, it was attractive. Yes, yes, she was. she's very beautiful, yes. She has an excellent surgeon. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. As you wish. Because... And, and she's obviously one of those individuals that this education system failed. <laughs> I think so as well, yes. Well, I mean, uh, there's some truth to that. Then again, she's a multimillionaire. Yes. Well, you don't have to be intelligent to be rich. No, no. You well, to make or to make billions, even. Just look at the Kardashians. Well, and, that, and therein lies the. Yeah, well, if you're intelligent, example. you might be more able to lose billions. Well, yeah. yes. Well, yeah. Uh, Which we've seen recently. Yes. Yes, in uh, Sam Bankman, Bankman Free. Yes. Well, I was thinking about Musk, Musk. and Twitter. Yeah, well, that, that, that too. That's correct. Yes, we. Uh, I, I had somebody uh, saw somebody saying, "Oh, he's just killing Twitter because he wants it as a tax write-off." It's like, dude, you do not understand how tax write-offs work. Again, no. a, a failing in the educational yes. system. You well, still lose more money as a write-off than you do than if you paid the taxes. Well, I mean, that, that's like I, I saw yeah. where somebody, you know, it was uh, Bezos came out and said he was going to give away so many billions of dollars or what have you, or give away all his money. And, you know, it was like... Uh, Musk did it about two weeks earlier when he bought Twitter. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You're just jumping on the bandwagon. Yeah. Well, you know, tis the season, folks. Yeah. Yes. 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 His ex-wife's giving away a lot of money too. We need to get on that is. bandwagon. That's right. Got to keep up with we, her. We need some. We need some support for snakes and otters here. Uh, <coughs> well, what is her name? Mackenzie something or Scott? I believe. Yeah, yes. Scott. Mackenzie Scott. Uh, Scott. Uh, yes. Does she like bourbon? You know. Although she can probably afford her own bourbon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. She can afford to buy every uh, distillery in the state, I think. Just about, yeah. She's supposed to be but giving away all of her dough. So we, well, we she, she only came out of it with like $100 billion. Yeah. Uh, something like that. She has actually been uh, fairly generous to this town already. Oh, yeah. Uh, with, with some grants here. So we do appreciate it. Well, you know, it. I applaud that. Uh, That's right. Mm -hmm. You know, that I think is, is you, know, you don't have to be smart to give money away. You don't have to be stupid to give money away. Um, but I think that that speaks for a well-formed person uh, all the way around. Yes, from what I've understood, she's a very uh, a very altruistic and, mm -hmm. and decent yeah. person. Yes, because you know, a lot of people who, who end up with that kind of money, especially when they did not uh, have a direct hand in building in the company. Obviously, I'm sure she was there every step of the way. Because I mean, they were together before the company was. That's was right. Built. Yeah, they were. A there was never a prenup because they didn't have anything. Yeah, and that's why she got half. But you know. She she could just live on you know a tenth of a percent of the interest and still live like you know like a millionaire king. yeah well a king yeah, yeah. yeah. and, and mm -hmm. you know the fact that she's willing to give it away yeah. uh, speaks well you know the key to successfully giving things away is you have to put the work in you yes. gotta, you got to be well advised and you got to do the research yeah and know what's really worthwhile and what's not yeah so. Um, right. Well, it's, it's easy to spend to, it, yeah. But it's not easy to give it away. Uh, uh, yeah, that's. I mean, yeah. well, Probably. it can be. Well, it can, yeah, that's right. It can, yeah, yeah. yeah, give it away well, because I mean, you know, you can well, start writing where it really it, makes a difference. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 it makes me think of an old. Uh, it was a Richard Pryor film, I believe. Bruce yeah, Bruce, yeah, yeah. Bruce Bruce's Bruce's millions. millions. Oh, that's right. I remember that. Yes, oh, he had to give away thirty million dollars in thirty days. Or some, something, something like that. yeah, some short. short yeah, yeah, he had time. to waste it yes. in order to get like three hundred million. Yeah, right, right. And uh, he couldn't have any more than like uh, 
ex- he had to get rid of all of it and couldn't have yeah uh, couldn't give have away any more than yeah couldn't have any assets but he couldn't give away more than X amount to charitable causes yeah he had to actually spend it on stuff yeah, yeah and, and not have anything it. left over yeah. mm-hmm. so and that's hard and not tell anybody about it and not tell anybody about it yeah so he bought a rare stamp. And ma- and mailed it and mailed it, and made it yes, worthless. Yes, yes. yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. He he invested money in some uh, some scheme that turned out to be good, and it was making <laughs> yeah. money on it, and just about had a yeah. heart attack. Yeah, yeah there you go. Yeah. Which is which is the irony of the of the, yeah. the whole yeah. movie is that no matter how hard he tried, every time he tried something, it would yeah. fail. Yeah, it keeps coming back with more cash. That's yeah. right. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so I mean, th- it it is. It's difficult to to. And didn't wasn't there something to do with a political election or something? Don't vote yes. for me. Yes, none of the above. None of the above. None of the above. Vote yes. for none of the above. Which and is that, not necessarily that one, like, bad advice. Yeah, the Chicago mayor election or something. Yeah. Like, none of the mm-hmm. above. <laughs> well, you get enough debt on your side, you can win any election, mm-hmm. especially in Chicago. All right, so John Dewey, we got. Yeah, yeah sorry. Yeah, yeah. rabbit hole, rabbit, rabbit hole. hole. Yeah. yeah. So well, that's that's right. We want to talk about <coughs> want to talk about pragmatism a little bit. And so, I think pragmatism is, that's, I mean, we could talk a lot, as a polymath, Dewey was into lots of things. We're going to try to keep this down to a, a philosophical level, because this is kind of like our, our philosophical tool here. But pragmatism is a, it's a philosophical tradition that considers words and thought as tools and instruments. Okay? It rejects the idea that thought is to describe, <coughs> represent, or mirror Reality, yes, I'm reading that one here. But this goes back to the heart of one of my issues with Dewey, is he believes that you can and should use thought and discussion or all those things that you go about that to better yourself. You can think your way to prosperity if you just do it. And that's what I want us to chew on. To try and think about that. It's the nature of knowledge, language, and concepts. They're not viewed for themselves. There's no value in them for themselves. It's only what they can produce that gives them value. That's pragmatism. Mm-hmm. Well, in many ways, it's, it, is de- uh, it, it comes off, even though the, the, the wikis don't uh, attribute it directly to, uh, to Mill, you know, there is a, a, a large element of yes. utilitarianism in there. Very much so. Uh, which, of course, is why we railed against uh, uh, John Stuart Mills in the, in the last episode. Uh, or last philosopher, uh, history episode, rather. Yeah. And, um, you know, when we think about being pragmatic today, yeah. we think about, well, what can you do? You That's know, right, yeah, exactly. Know, it's about... What can be done? What is doable? Let's do mm-hmm. that. You know, don't let the the perfect be the enemy of the good. Yes, uh, which is you know one of my favorite maxims because, uh, as we uh, as we all know, our uh, uh, esteemed friend in, in the northern climate, um, uh, uh, this is one of the things I, I remind him often uh-huh. that you know don't let the perfect be the enemy of the good. Which is a good philosophy. It is. It is uh, because far too life moves too fast nowadays for that to be something right. we can afford to do. And, um, you know, the whole idea, though, that, uh, how did you put it, that basically you can think yourself into prosperity? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so that's very much the core of uh, probably the seminal uh, self-development motivational book, Think and Grow Rich. Well, exactly, yes. Uh, and that, you know, that philosophy uh, came around from early 1900s through uh, the 1930s. Yeah, which is, you know, that's, 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 time, that's Dewey's time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, tail end of it, yeah. And to be honest, that's still taught as a, or used uh, in a huge religious movement here in the oh, United yeah, yeah. States with the prosperity gospel. Yes, yep. that's correct. Yeah, yes. that, that is that is an outgrowth of and a, exactly. and a redirection of. Yes, uh, it, it, is, it, it, it it injects the divine into that, yeah. which is something that's not due. We do this no. he, right, he, right. And in many respects, he rejected a whole lot of. The divine completely had anything to do with it. You can, uh, in thinking your way to do that, there's also an uh, an idolatry there mm-hmm. that yes. you have yes. all that you need. Which, ironically, mm-hmm. that's even even Christians today use that mm-hmm. it's a theology of abundance, and it's not a bad one. No. But it does not. But it does not. His philosophy excludes everything except your own. 
devices, so mm -hmm. to speak. Well, the whole idea of you have all that you need. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you're right. It's not a bad uh, part yeah, of it's philosophy. Not a bad philosophy. Yeah. It's how you define that, though. Exactly. Yeah. And there's there because, the rub. Uh, is it you have all that you need from the minimalist standpoint, or do you have all that you need to do whatever you want? Independent of anybody else. Exactly. Yes. And and that is a difference. I will say that uh, that the uh, the thinking grow rich uh, start a lot. It is not a I have all that I can do and I don't need anybody else. It is very much uh, uh, I have all that I need and that I can build something with the help of others. Right. Uh, which I would think a much better way of looking at, at this sort of thing. Right. Um, the thing that uh, I found interesting going along with this uh, this whole idea of. Uh, being a founder of modern pragmatism, is uh, back in uh, in the beginning of uh, talking about his stuff in the wiki, it talks about, um, what is it, practical empiricism. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, very much so. Uh, which I find very interesting because the practical empiricism, the practical part, you know, makes me think of the modern pragmatism. Of course, the empiricism mm -hmm. I would think that Martin would like very much because, mm -hmm. as we know, Martin's very much an empiricist. Um, what? So, but I haven't, because again, this is not where I've done my research. Because <laughs> yeah. you know me, I'm not real big on the uh, on the prep ahead of time. I'm uh, just never find the time. So, what have you got in your research, Francis? Uh, on so you just grimace. So I, I, I caught him on the I wasn't, I wasn't going down that. Okay, okay. That rabbit hole. Have, sorry, no. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, and I would have I would have to retool, and I'd have to re, re get backwards. Someone turned uh, left in Albuquerque. That's, that's yeah, well, right. Yeah, I wasn't. I mean, yeah, but you're, you're right. It's very, it's very important. It's tied into pra pragmatism, of course. All yes. he's, 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 he is a very cohesive thinker. I, I should point that out. That uh, so much of his efforts, uh, unlike some who would who concentrate only on a few certain things, his is very much a spherical type of a philosophy where everything is connected with each other in vastly different areas and that you can do that. Pragmatism, what I want to get into here though is, and here's my issue with pragmatism, is it's very inhumane at its core. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because all right, that's, that's the utilitarian influence. That, that's exactly it's very inhumane and I use that word very deliberately because it is just the side of the ends justifying the means. Everything is about outcomes, mm -hmm. and that's the educator in him. If you, you, all of Dewey's philosophies on education, with regards to outcomes, that's that we are hearing that today. You know, all about testing, 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 outcomes, outcomes, outcomes. Yeah. That's how you judge all that. That's Dewey. Yeah. That's where it all comes from. Yeah, and I his, see in that because on pedagogy, right? And it, it, there's there is absolutely no room for evaluating things based on effort. Mm -hmm. Or intention; those are uh, those are beyond well, irrelevant uh, or dangerous. He would call. Them. Well, it's all about in many results. ways, though. That that's uh, he's right in many ways because Aha. of course that's where we that's where we want to because take. when when you think about uh, when you evaluate something, uh, you know the whole point of the evaluation is to find out how well you did, how well you understand. When you're talking about education, how well you understand what was taught, all right. right. I can intend to learn something yeah. and put a ton of effort into it, but if I don't grasp the concept, if I can't demonstrate that I grasp the concept, then the, the, the attempted at education failed, or the attempt at learning failed, right. depending on and which side of that. The, you're on. the important part of that analysis then is: is it the method, or is it the student, or the student, or or what's actually been the breakdown there? Well. Right. And, and testing, granted, does not tell you that. It only tells you whether or not, especially the way we do it today, only tells you whether or not you were able to learn the material for the test. Uh, it's very difficult it, with mass testing today to actually demonstrate proficiency. Uh, that that's is correct. Why, and, he, and he had issues with that. He had, he had strong issues with that because he recognized that you have to demonstrate proficiency and that does not mean you have to demonstrate memory. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that's why a liberal arts school, like, because we all are that's graduate, all, we're all, all from that. Bellarmine. Right. This is where we all met. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, it, the, the benefit of the liberal arts school is that it does teach you uh, in a much better way how to put those things together. That's right. Uh, you know, think about our senior seminar classes uh -huh. uh, that, that we had. Uh, you know, Martin and I, we had our senior seminar together. That was one of the best classes. Uh, three, it, it was me, you, um, 
Tram and um, well, both Bryans, wasn't it? Um, you know, I'm having a blank here. Uh, I believe so because I believe Batman and I had all the same classes. Uh-huh. You were in quite a few at the end. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. um, because we had uh, who was the the blind guy? Uh, uh, Mr. Vore. Yes, I had Vore, him. Yes. yes, not with you all, but I had him. Right, he was right. the guy who taught it because he had his his daughter or niece or somebody that was always helping around campus and what yeah. have you. Fantastic teacher. Yes, really he was. was. He was yes. phenomenal. Yeah. He was actually he took a sculpting class that I was in at Bellarmine. No kidding. Uh, with with Lockhart, yeah, yeah, yeah that was all. He, but he was a great guy. But I remember uh, the the four of us sitting in the back, uh, and you know we might have had others with us. I can't remember because uh, there are a bunch of us that that knew each other. That were in that yeah. kind of class. There's only about 15 of us in the entire class. Yeah, but that was a great because we talked about issues, and then we wrote papers on it every week, or, or mm-hmm. however often it was. Uh, and that was one of my favorite classes. I didn't think I was going to like it, but it was you know it was it was supposed to be the epitome of what it meant. I didn't understand it at the time because right. you know young and stupid. Yeah. Now as I look back on it, it's supposed to be the epitome of that liberal arts education, yeah, it's, it's, demonstrating. That you have uh, built a, a finely honed mind, right? Which is ironically, that's something that Dewey was not particularly in favor of. He was thought no. very differently. And I, and not, just, what was he not in favor of? Uh, the, that liberal arts approach. Okay. No. Okay. Yeah. Of, of being this, well, yeah. uh, he said, a teacher ought, and I'm just going to give you the quick quote here. Teacher ought ought to strive to be a high class student in all the subjects here he has to teach. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's not that he said it should be. They should have an unusual love and aptitude in one, some one mm-hmm. subject, or whatever. They do not have to be a scholar in all subjects. In fact, that's a problem. Yeah. And well, not everybody's <laughs> able to do that. I, mean, I understand. And but certainly, as a teacher, I have no problem with that. Right. However, as a student, you don't have to master all of those, but I think you need to be exposed to them. Well, that's correct. And see, that's why he he's very much a compartmentalization. Yeah, uh, thing, and I, and I understand that coming from the milieu, he does because prior to his innovations, Sorry. yes, education was very much wrote, prove you memorized. That's right. That mm-hmm. kind What's of the thing. German model. Yeah, so so right. I get so, yeah, he the, is revolutionary. Yeah, yeah, yeah and, and in and coming from where he is, yes, I get where he, you know, sees education as this. You know, revolutionary thing that he can do. What's well, a tool? Yeah, yeah. and and I, I get where he's. You know, this this extreme need for it coming from where he's coming from. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I agree. I, I think there's he's he's too narrow, too narrow of vi- well, a vision, too narrow of focus. Well, one one of the things you know with with, with Dewey is his. Uh, uh, would it be pedagogical views on on education with uh, the idea of that whole background of pedagogy as opposed to andragogy or uh, oh, what is the third one here? Uh, demagogy. <laughs> uh, I like you know, the ten dollar word, with, Marcus. With the, yes. uh, with, no, the, the the only reason I know all this is because because you just looked it up. It, well, no, actually, it's it's actually a business partner of mine. And what we were doing with adult education. Oh, right, right. Yes, yes, yeah. I remember and that. And our yes. viewpoints on that. Uh, yeah. I, ped- pedagogy is, is based on the idea that the, the teacher is the font of knowledge. Knowledge is set in, in, in you know, strict confines as to the knowledge of the teacher and forced upon the students. Well, you know, that's interesting. Yeah. Uh, that is a modern definition it is. of pedagogy. Yeah. Uh, when you look at 2,000 years ago, how people were brought into the church, exactly, the pedagogical method there, and it it's, was the pedagogy, that's uh-huh. the, yes. was a three-year method. You lived mm-hmm. what you learned. Yes. It was very much more the liberal arts. Yeah, yeah. Uh, right. And Dewey Realm was, yeah, things. I mean, he, he was mm-hmm. in favor of experiential education, exactly. and, learning and, and by doing, agree, yes. and that's yes. all awesome. So, and, and, yeah. 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 Well, yeah, but, that, that's, the, the, that's the pragmatism in it. If you can right. think it, you have to be able to, in order to think, it's not just an intellectual exercise. It mm-hmm. is a broad-based, sure. uh, yes. complete, holistic approach. Well, with, uh, yes, but. For, do, for Dewey. For, for Dewey. Dewey, yes, but given what we've already said, it would seem that that holistic approach 
would still be within the narrow confines yes. of whatever it is you are Big trying time. to be an expert. Yes. That is exactly yeah, yeah. for him. So, yeah. Yes, for him. So. And that's the problem. I think that is part of the problem of modern education. It is. In many, many fashions. Because we, supposedly, you know, this whole idea of liberal arts education is, is a common one, but it's not really. No. It's given a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of hot air, for lack of a better term. But as far as uh, truly exposing oneself to a lot of different things, mm -hmm. a lot of different ideas, a lot of different subjects, doesn't really happen in, especially the large universities. Mm -hmm. uh, if you That's go to, uh, to a large university and you go into a particular field of study, mm -hmm. most of your study is going to be in that field. Your yeah. electives, um, you know, you may have just as many electives as we had at Bellarmine, yeah. but... You know, you're not going to be encouraged to, to take all the different things that we that There's we no, there, there, you're the not requirement be required to take. Yeah, exactly. all you're not required different. to get that exposure to music, to art, uh -huh. right. to other things. You're not going to yeah. take you know three credit or not three credit three classes, nine credit hours of philosophy, mm. nine credit hours of, of theology. religion, yeah. theology, uh, much less any of the other stuff that that we have the opportunity to take. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, but it's a you know, philosophy. It's just so. It's just so narrow. Well, that's right. Yeah, and that's my right. problem. I mean, when you can get away with getting credit hours for a bowling class and right, you know, yeah, things like that, it's like, well, okay, but yeah, I mean, you know, take use the time in college to explore. It's your chance to explore. Right. Yeah. And nowadays, the option to explore is is often nothing more than okay. Yeah, I'm going to take my my bowling class because I got to have my PE, which is ridiculous mm -hmm. uh, at a many, college level. Yeah, that's correct. Well, I mean, it's not a bad thing because especially when you look at the the, the shape uh, kids are in nowadays from sitting in front of the computer all day or mm -hmm. the, the the gaming system. But it's pudgy little bastards. Well, yeah, well, you know, pudgy well, old bastards. Yeah, they turned into us. Pudgy old bastards. Right. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Old bastards right. Exactly. But at least we, you know, it took us years to get to this kind of shape. Exactly. You know, we earned we, ours. We have, hey, yeah, we earned those dad bods. Yeah, That's but, right. That, but the, the problem with the idea of exploration in the modern university system is. The cost associated with that, cash wise. Oh, well, yes, that's getting right. education. That is an but, economic piece that it, we had really. Yeah. Yeah. But you know what the real problem with that exploration? It's not an exploration because it's all inward focused. Yeah, but it's and, an exploration of yourself. Well, and how you explore you're yourself, you should do in private. Yeah. Um, but no, I mean, it's you think about yeah. all of the the, you know, and I don't want to go political, but when you think about all of the, the blank studies. Uh, yeah. Programs or the right, just yeah. the very I mean that's probably the best example. They're almost always focused on a very slender, narrow mm -hmm. uh, identification of the person. Yeah, right. and you know whether it be gender studies, women's studies, men's studies, if that even exists anywhere. Which, and it is very, it's both inward focused on on something, yet at the same same time group focused on this kind of nebulous. Uh, monolithic well, and, thing. Uh, and it's not... Again, it just, there's just no broad experience. There doesn't seem to be an educational piece there other than a social type of education. Well, it, it's really more of a... Indoctrination. Well, you know, but yeah. there's, there's, a, there's an it's, element of that in it's most It's a bachelor of fact yeah. is what it is. Well, well yeah, yeah, I mean, it's a... Because it's, a, it's basically nothing more than a self-wanking. Well, yeah, it, that's why I call it, it a bachelor. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. <laughs> well, but individuals right now seem to want to be ex just like always accepted into groups and what have you. Well, yes. The thing is, they're wanting it into very defined labels. Yes. Uh, well, yes. and it's not just the acceptance; it's the approval. Of the pro the, pro yeah, the approval to, is most important. Yes. Uh, and it's it's very uh, it's you're getting a degree in grievance. Yes, yes. is what you're basically. That's what doing. it leads you're to. Yeah, and I think that's exactly what grievance. it leads to. And and that would be very anti Dewey. Yeah, I mean, yes, he, it would. He be. definitely wanted people to his credit. He wanted people to learn mm -hmm. and get along. And he thought mm -hmm. that was one of the big things about public education is you could bring lots of different kinds of kids together and they yes. would learn to accept them. 
each other. But you know, yeah, what? and that, that that is a, a very good thing that he had. No, because yes, it goes but back to his flawed. idea of de- yeah. But I want to talk about how that's flawed mm-hmm. after we. Time, the captain. I've been trying. I've been trying. I know. I know you guys are raising your glasses here. Like, but I know we kept talking we, while we were raising your glasses. We kept talking while you were raising your glasses. Yes, here. yes. That's why I paused for because you. it's bourbon time again. Bourbon break. Folks. Bourbon break. <gasps> breath. Bourbon breath. Yes, exactly. Not yet. Uh, uh, my my ice has already uh, melted here, so I haven't done it. We are all drinking the same thing this time yes. here. That's I, right. Here at Studio M, I've got three uncracked bottles. Uh, Saving for just this occasion, our first aroma. Uh, bourbon that we're sampling here is Evan Williams 1783 Small Batch, right? Um, which is again probably a sub twenty dollar bottle, mm-hmm. uh, really? but it's just it's you know a smaller. Um, it's not often sub, you see it's a, a sub brand of Evan Williams, right? right. Yeah, which is a, long, a which is a large brand. Yes, it's not often you see a. a Small batch that's under twenty dollars. Well, that's exactly right. Yeah, and it's uh, what's the proof it's on good. this one here? Is it this is a ninety, 90, proof, a 90, 90 proof. especially a ninety, which, which is about the sweet proof. spot. Yeah. Uh, for for me, I'm discovering uh, uh, some of the the higher proofs give me a headache very quickly. Uh, Whereas, see, yeah, I've always preferred the big boy bourbons. Yeah, <laughs> as my friend Robert Botts used to say. Yes, uh, God rest his soul. But so, it, well, you know, you're a big boy. So I'm a big boy now. So you can handle the big boy. Well, that's right. Well, not anymore, I can't. Well, no, you can't, but uh, you, you could. I could. But yes, you, no. can, you can virtually do so. Yes. So. Well, I can smell it. Yes, know. it does have a, a, it has has a good, aroma. Good, good aroma. Very good aroma, um, yes. You know, obviously, we all do ice uh, in ours. Uh, oh, we have this, We've not always been oh, that way. Well, you, I've you, never you, been an ice person. Oh, oh you have not okay. experienced the fullness of bourbon, then. You need the melting of the ice... To release the flavor. Yeah, but... It really... You know, oh, I'm telling you, you know... Now, I only do a little bit of ice. They, they do lots of lots ice. Of well, ice, I would yeah. say lots. Uh, a, I did a little three, bit more, yeah. and they were small, relatively small. Yeah, cubes. I probably guys did twice as much as that. Oh, I yeah. think you guys had a little bit more than that. But yeah. it's, a, it's a fair amount. Mm-hmm. And the reason I only do three is because I don't like to dilute it unless it's a really high proof, like the 100 to 120, which we don't have very many of the 120s. Well, the, the prohibition style that yeah, the, that's, that that's one of the few. My place the 100 was. is a little more common. The, right, the old yeah. Forester signature. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, well, the Wild Turkey 105. Yeah, example. the Wild Turkey. Yeah, yeah, yeah which, is, um, which is a big, big deal. So you know, I like to let mine sit a little bit before I uh, take a sip because I like to let mm-hmm. the, the 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 water open that up. And the first thing I noticed with this was uh, a nice bit of sweetness yep. at the back of the mouth on the yes. tongue, on yep. the back of the teeth. Um, but then, as it really expanded, it's very peppery. Really? Yes. I, I oh, very good. Very I had good. not articulated it, that in my mind, but you're exactly right. Yeah, it yes. starts a little chocolate and mm-hmm. then finishes a little pepper. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow, very good, so sir. Yeah. apparently... It's taken over a year, but my palate is catching up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because <laughs> I gave up soft drinks uh, a year ago. Uh-huh. Congratulations! Yeah, yeah exactly. And it, it makes it does make a very uh, smooth. Apparently, it helps. Very except very for smooth. burners. Yeah. Well, except for burners, I still do have my occasional burners, but I don't consider that. Uh, it, yeah, we That's, talk about soft yeah, drinks in the South. Right. We talk about it as cokes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah that hard caramel or uh, 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 dark. Cola, caramelly cola, cola, cola yeah. or derivatives yeah. like the. Yeah. Dr. I like the caramel. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, but uh, the cutting out that really... cutting out that corn syrup. Well, I, I was think always doing really... the diet though, so it wasn't yeah, well, corn syrup. Yeah, the, the much, sweetness yeah. and the and the cola flavor. Mm-hmm. I yeah, think which it does a derivative. It, it just of the, kills the, the palate. Yeah, mm-hmm. just kills it. Now I have so the Verners I still do have on occasion. It's hard to get down here. I do the zero sugar version. Uh, so I still don't have the... Yeah, now that I don't see much. I do see uh, regular Verners. We can find it at Myers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Which we, makes sense, because that's a Michigan... That's a Michigan-centered yeah, mm-hmm. thing. Right. So, uh, but you said you can get Verners here at the Kroger in Mount Washington. Right? Kroger in Mount Washington, you can get regular uh, sugar Verners. Yeah. I'm thinking about on the way home, sliding past the... Uh, getting off of Preston and hitting the, the Myers there and, and picking some up. You it's should, expensive yeah. there, though. Really? Yeah, it's like seven bucks a twelve pack. Wow! Yeah. I don't. Ch- Speak, speaking of, of such things, and, and your your home, your your homeland, uh, <laughs> so to speak, their fatherland Ty, ties in to Dewey. Oh yes, he was at the University, University of Michigan. Of Michigan. Yes. He moved around a lot. He, was he in did. Vermont, Michigan, Chicago, Chicago. Yeah, I mean, yes. that's yeah. in New York, absolutely. Yeah. But well, so 
That's what happens with philosophers. They piss enough people off that they're that's forced to leave. Well, to yeah, and, and, and then that's yes. actually one of the reasons he did do some of that because mm-hmm. in his early days when he was trying to, he was a teacher, mm-hmm. uh, and he was finally ends up, he hated the, the middle school and he hated the elementary, so he mm-hmm. finally went and got his master's to go back and teach in mm-hmm. college, and, and he pissed off, and I forget, yeah. uh, uh, the, uh, the powers that be, so he said, screw it, I'm going to get a doctorate. And I'll go elsewhere so mm-hmm. I can get my tenure and not have to deal with this crap. Which you know, it's interesting. doesn't work quite that way. But That's you know. a great story because, uh, not, although if we are, <laughs> I only talk about my experience with the bourbon. You guys finish yours real quick because mm-hmm. I, I, I got a great comment about that. Go ahead. No, I just, it, it was awesome. Uh, I agree. Mm-hmm. Choc- a chocolate start, mm-hmm. a little bit of pepper finish, a yeah. very, very mellow. Uh, yes. Nice the pepper aged. makes it seem a little harsh at the end, but it's really just in the flavor. Yeah, yeah. yeah it, it's not a. It's not a no pepper. It's like a ghost pepper or a jalapeno pepper. Right, mm-hmm. right. It's, it's like pepper, 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 pepper. It's black, yeah, pepper, black yeah. pepper, mm-hmm. with, but in a very subdued manner. It yeah. is not. It's mm-hmm. not overt. Yeah. It's a, it is not something harsh. It's very it's mellow, and, mellow and relaxed for a uh, for a twenty dollar bottle, man. Absolutely. Man. Okay, you, you were saying yes. Oh, so. The thing about him going from, you know, got tired of the elementary and, mm-hmm. and the middle school and all, all of that and went on to college and then it's like, screw it, got to get the doctorate. I, that is not surprising <laughs> yeah. because I think of how my educational experience teaching middle schoolers yeah. uh, in CCD. Right. Uh, so I did, uh, oh gosh, what did I do? Uh, I can't remember. I, I did, I think, third grade and sixth grade, a couple of different years. And... Sixth grade was, was the harder of the two. I just do not have the patience to teach young kids. And I, that's partially because, you know, it's like, how stupid can you be? You know, right. is what, well, what and, I'm yeah, thinking. And, I, and, that was, and I'm thinking that's probably his problem. That's exactly right. He realized that this is, you know, it takes a, and this is, I suppose, a an, uh, an homage <coughs> to the great teachers that we've all had at all levels. It takes a special person to mm-hmm. be able to teach at the lower grades. It does. You really have to have mm-hmm. a true heart for teaching. Mm-hmm. And, and it, because you're... And for kids. That's right, because you have well, to essentially dumb yourself down, to, to on conceptually speaking, to work with them. And it's all about relationships now. Because the rote teaching that we were all subjected mm-hmm. to has, has gone away, rightfully yes. so, in those levels. Because... It, it, Children these days come home and they love their teachers. That's the intention. That's the way it's supposed to be. Whereas before, in our age, you know, teachers were the, the demonic forces well, at times. That you were should love dominant. your teachers not because they coddle you. Though. No, 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 no. But, I'm speaking but educationally. Think, yes, but I think that's where uh, what a lot of teachers strive for is they want to be loved for how nice they are and things. As opposed no. to the effect they have. That's yeah. right. Yeah, the inspirational effect. And I don't mean just those who teach the right. little ones. Well, that's correct because if you inspire, you will be beloved. Yeah. But well, you, but at they higher don't. levels now they're afraid. But one yeah. one of the things I studied uh, early on that I looked on because I've, I've done a lot of work with education over the years, and uh, teachers for the most part when they go into teaching, huh? they're doing they're in it for the right reasons. Right. They're gung ho about it. They love either their subject, the students, all the above, the whole nine yards. They're very inspired. Right. But by the time they hit about year seven, the bureaucracy and uh, the, the overhead, the administration, yeah. and the bullshit that goes along with that, and the some of the overbearing parents, everything else, they have been beaten down. That's right. That's correct. And. By year thirteen or so, that determines whether or not they stay in education. Yes, that is. You're exactly right. And, there is a huge turnover. And if they that by thirteen now, if they make it to thirteen, there's still a few that are still inspired, but the majority are there waiting out their retirement. So, how long did Mrs. Francis stay as an educator? Oh, not long. I mean, you guys remember, it was probably three, four years. Three, four years, yeah. Yeah, Yeah. not long. She was teaching Uh, eighth grade. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's a hard grade. Well, it it was. She did like it, but see, and just looking back, and she would agree Mm -hmm. with me on this, that she didn't really know where her, not only say talent, because she's extremely talented in Mm -hmm. many, many ways, but I don't think she's, uh, and I hate, and this is going to sound kitschy, 
she didn't understand where her passion really was, mm -hmm. where her real talents were, uh, that yes. she was able to inspire. Because leadership's where she's at. Okay, that's where she, that I mean that's uh -huh. where she just yeah. excels in that. And it's not just, and, and it's it is a developmental leadership. That's mm -hmm. the educational background that she mm -hmm. has, where she's wanting to develop the people with her. And she cares for the people with her, even those that drive her crazy. Like you. Well, yeah, yeah. So it's something, yeah, well, Perfect example. I am the ultimate you are the, you are, crazy you are maker her. of her. Yes. Yeah, you, you, yes. you are yeah. the epitome of your, your he life. He is work. the whetstone upon which she sharpens herself. Yes. Oh, aren't, is, aren't you good? That's that right. I'm going to have to get her to listen to this episode. Because Metaphor this. alert. Metaphor alert. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I find there is a, a bit of a naivete to... Yes, education that they, they yeah, don't and, understand, uh -huh. and that, I can tell you that from yes, the parish that you know that I, that I'm assigned to because we have one of the largest schools here locally, uh, and the turnover rate is enormous from first you know brand spanking well, new teachers. Yeah. That's partially a function of being in a Catholic school system. That's right. Yes. You're paid less. That's yeah. correct. Some of that is that, so, and you don't have union protections. That and the part of that's they're true, but most of the I don't want to say most. Many of those get into the Catholic school system deliberately because they recognize that even with those disadvantages, mm -hmm. there are enormous amounts of advantages oh, yes, that yes. are above. You're, you're going to have engaged and caring parents. That is, exactly. Yeah, right. well, well, if, if yeah you you're have, less likely to have the the, uh, the psycho parents. You're still going to get them. That's yeah, correct. Yeah. They're, they're, but they but, are, and it's less likely to be a babysitting job. Yes. That is yes. correct. You're right. You have the ability to act. I mean, I've a, a lot of public not, school teachers. And you're not that right, but my point is the, the turnover is are those who didn't get into the public school system, uh -huh. come to the Catholic schools for a couple of years, so they've got credentials under their belt, yeah. and then they can slide back into some the, of that's there, and a lot of yes, them leave the industry completely. Yes, they do. Yeah, that's, I'm, that's I'm where just, I'm kind of. I saw with a this. lot of the. What I was talking about when, when I was at uh, my first parish, St. Paul's, when I was mm -hmm. on the um, uh, the, the uh, count, parish council, because mm -hmm. uh, we talked about because we had a uh, parish school, sure, uh, yeah, uh -huh. and they still do, yeah, uh, and there was always talk about how the you know turnover at school, and, and that's the was, reason I know what I the, know is the because teachers of who that were one or two position. years in and they left for public school, yeah, they, almost they, universally, that's right, and it meant for other reasons too. Uh, there was. Uh, in many respects, too, they get into something and they realize, and I don't want to say this is a failure for the education system that brought them in there, but they realize this is not what they thought it was. And yeah. that goes yeah. back to your question about what my wife did. I think she got in the reason this is not as fulfilling as mm -hmm. she loved the students, but she feels like she's on a hamster wheel. Yes. Yeah. And there's going to, and that's the nature of the cyclical system that yes, we have. Is. Well, unless you are the only teacher. Or only of a handful of teachers, you follow a grade from the yeah. beginning until their graduation. Yeah, and even then, it's going to be cyclical. It's just going to be a longer yeah. cycle. Right. Uh, you know, it, well, I, education is designed, yeah. and to, there's some to, of to that try. within the school itself. Yeah. If you if the school is sure. small enough or plugged in enough, and your teacher core is integrated well enough. <laughs> well, You'll you'll be able to continue that. Well, I yeah, still have conversations. Elementary with schools school. are going to churn like that. That's right. When you get to middle yeah. school and high school, that's where you where have change. Yeah, it, it's more it's, segmentation. And, well, and it's and not it's more segmentation. It's just you have teachers who don't teach just one group of kids. No, you no. have where you know uh, uh, it, it's more Dewey's ideal where right. they have a specialization. Yeah. Right. And so instead of the elementary school teacher teaching. Math, science, religion. Well, probably not religion in, in Catholic schools, but uh, can be. Uh, sure. But it basically teaching yeah. all in of the elementary, subjects. elementary, yeah, every, every te the teachers, they don't switch until like the fourth or fifth grade. Yeah. yeah. And, and even that's best, just yeah. a, a segmentation type of yeah. thing. Yeah. <laughs> where they'll, 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 they'll switch off some of that. And that's part of that is not because they need to, it's because to prepare them for high school. Yeah. Where right. that's the norm. Yeah. It has to be that way, but, and it's just as the, they go up the ladder. But I think a good deal of Dewey's philo philosophies on, on education like that and, and pedagogy are a result the of the fact that in his day and time, the younger kids, well, have you, a lot of that was one-room schoolhouses, basically. I'm glad you brought that up because Dewey is a... That's how he would have been educated. That's correct. We mm -hmm. have to keep in mind 
Dewey's genius mm-hmm. is the fact that he comes from that era uh-huh. and, and changes changed it. See, because at, we yeah. hear his philosophy say, well, of course, that's the way we operate. We don't realize that he and changed his, that. Yeah, his time his, it wasn't like that. That's right. His, yeah, he his, came from a classical model. Mm-hmm. We, yeah, we think about classical and that's at the education. higher levels, though. That's well, right. no, even that one room schoolhouse right. is much more of a classical model. Oh, the Socratic, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's yeah. much more of a rote yeah. memorization. Yeah. That's well, right. Not only that, but I mean, just you've got that. Uh, you've got the, small group. Mm-hmm. You've got the mentor leader. Yeah, the yeah. sage on the stage, as they use yes. the term yes. these days. Whereas after he is at, he's born in fifty nine. Yeah, mm-hmm. so he becomes an adult. Uh, Turn of yeah. century. Well, no, 79. Seven, is, yeah, that's he's still oh, 18, well, that's 20 years. Well, yeah, sorry, I mean, yeah. he, he could have been a grandfather by the time the turn of the century came around right, at 40. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, what I'm saying is that you know he started out learning in that classical model. Yes. And by the time he gets to become an adult, mm-hmm. the Industrial Revolution has hit big time in the United mm-hmm. States and in, in uh, Europe. Right. And it is also when we start adopting... Mm-hmm. The, the German idea of how to educate, mm-hmm. which is very much geared toward the Industrial Revolution. That's right. It's a His segmentation whole philosophy of, things. of mm-hmm. how to educate is maybe he didn't intend it this way. Yeah. But it is ultimately used mm-hmm. to produce the drones that do the work. Ooh, Whether it really? is yeah, on the assembly is. line uh-huh. okay. or in the office, where you because have a guy whose only job is, is to add up these numbers yeah. Yeah. and give it to the boss every yeah, week. That's right. Now, granted, nowadays it we have the, programs that do that. Yeah, right, but, but at the time, you know, it was the same thing as the assembly yeah. line. You know, yes. your, your uh-huh. job is to turn this turn this nut on fifty thousand items that come through. Exactly, and that is, and therein lies that feel, that inhumanity that I yes. go yes. back to. I want to switch it's back the to industrialization of education. Yes, it is. So good today. God dang it, he's on fire today because that's exactly what we're talking about here. Dewey, uh, for the time, he was a product of his time, and he was necessary for his time. Yes. And as we wrap this thing up, I want to try to get us to this to this piece here. But ultimately, we've outgrown him. Yes. I don't want to say he was not necessary for his time because he was because he was revolutionary. Right, right. I think you're right. I think there's a lot of really well, good we ideas needed here him to get us of, to the next level. Yeah. Uh, but there's because, a, there's a, a but a we've lost coming. something in the way. Uh-huh. And I'm not necessarily saying that Socratic classical education model is either good or bad. I have a I have a love for it. I think sitting at the feet of Socrates as it were to learn. Mm-hmm. But that presumes that Socrates is the wise, good man in exactly. all areas that he needs to be. And we all well, can remember those teachers we had. Yeah. The best ones we had knew a lot about a lot. Yeah. Well, about life. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, well, they were able to... In, the, the teachers that I think of when I think about the ones that, that were the best, that I enjoyed the most, learned the most from, or, or got the most out of, um, they weren't always the ones that knew... A lot about a lot. Not always. Sometimes the, uh, sometimes often, the system didn't prevent that, They were the that, ones though. that were extreme experts in their field. Yes. So, you know, think about uh, Maggie, Dr. Mahoney. Ma- Maggie Mahoney is my she first is, thought. Yeah. yeah, she's the epitome she, of that. Yeah, but, but we never got to see her outside of that... Well, uh, Frank Martin did a little bit because you, you had her through mm-hmm. uh, Cardinal, Cardinal section. 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 So you um, got a little bit of that. See, and that's where and that's kind of where I'm projecting here a little bit is because she was brilliant. She was, and brilliance itself for those who wish to learn. Not everybody gives a rat's ass, but for those like us Renaissance men mm-hmm. that do truly wish to learn, that comes forth. And maybe that's why we liked her so much is because well, she was, because even though she was. In many ways, had a, a, a very droning voice. Uh, her meanwhiles broke it up. <laughs> yeah, but it was great. But, but, but I mean, but it, was, it was. But she was fascinating in that because she was such the expert. Because uh, to watch, because you know, as we all know, she could stand there and not even look at what she was writing on those overhead projectors. Yeah, yeah, and just talk and talk and talk. And the only reason she wrote it down was for our sake. That's uh-huh. correct. That's right. Because she could have sat up there. You know, and, and just talk, talk the entire time. And, and I had a, I had a philosophy professor at St. Minor that that way, uh, Mr. Ring. Man, he's gone to God. He was a wonderful man. Uh, never got his PhD because he said, "Why do I need it? I've got right. exactly what I need here." He was the guy that would start the. Philo- I had him for both medieval philosophy and ancient philosophy, mm-hmm. and the whole program was he would begin it, and it kind of became a joke. Let me begin by departing from the text, and he never went back there. You never used it. 
Well, it was you know, not necessary. Maggie that was, was like that. That's right. Even though we had to buy that stupid book, everything she never was used her. This. That's right. It, that was just for your backup. That's if you want to learn more. If you want to yeah. you know, do that, but and he and he had no notes. You know, this graduate level, so you know you should be able to figure this out. You sit and just listen to him, and it was very much Socratic, mm-hmm. as he is the wise sage, and you best keep up. We well, see, and that's why I say that that uh, that classical we have we have lost a great deal of mm-hmm. what is what makes good learning in my my. That was a good method because, in many ways, and well, we've pushed and I'm it not aside saying, by many yes, have. But, yes, but we and the part that I, I think that is bad that we've lost. Is that what we've replaced it with? Is with some different things. You know that whole idea. First of all, that you have to be an expert in only one thing. Uh, I think is a very bad way to go because it leaves you very unprepared everywhere else. That's Dewey. Yeah, that's that's, um, his, that's that also, industrialization here. We've replaced it with this. With as I said before, this inward looking uh, way of well, studying anything. Yeah, but and. It, when you are not a well-rounded individual, you know it doesn't mean you have to be an expert in everything, but you need to know a little bit about a lot of things. Yeah, to be conversant yeah. in many things is a is an interesting person. Yeah. Right. You don't have you don't have to be uh, that what? that pedagogue about everything. Right. But or demagogue about everything. Demagogue exactly. Well, because but, ultimately pedagogy leads to demagoguery. Right? Yeah. yeah. Well, being we're just, just using your words. I understand. It's so cool. It's but, so cool. We the, don't use those words in here. Well, but the we, pedagogy, we though, is really... I think of that more as a particular method. That's yeah, right. Because you know, you know, not, not every method will lead to demagoguery, but it can. I'm just loving the words here. Folks. But you see, we, one of the things that we, we need to realize is when Dewey started, okay... He was at the beginning of the Industrial Revolution. Right. He was there from that changing from an agricultural society to an industrial society. And we, right now, are also living through a change in that. Yes. Very, uh, uh, very perceptive. For, sir. For, yep. a, for a few years, it was a service eco- you know, society and economy. It's not anymore. No. Uh, and you can tell that because you can't get a waiter anywhere. Exactly. Uh-huh. And... We're at that odd time of trying to figure out where we need to go philosophically, educationally, and everything else. Because education up, follows philosophy. Exactly. To keep up with a society that seems to be evolving and changing at an ever-increasing pace. But to almost geometrically so. Yes. Uh, at light speed. Yes. And, our, and we don't even have time to evaluate this at times. No. A lot of this is technology that's driving this. Well, I yes. I think that's where well, we found our... Well, it's certainly a lot of it's it. cash. I, well, well that's, cash. that's true. Because cause where our capital goes... Therefore, the social movements go. Exactly. So you're exactly right with regard to so, that. So we've, we've and done, we've got a tremendous amount okay. of that at this time and place yes. in, in history, which well, we have not always had. I mean, we, we've in got, large numbers, we've got a huge number of young ladies who see OnlyFans as a career path. Well, economically, which it is. economically so, they can lose. They, 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 they can make a hundred thousand a month. That's they understand they, supply and demand. They do indeed, very much so. Uh, and it was—it's an amazingly strange way of looking at it, but it also is a commentary upon our society. Exactly, it is because uh, exactly we have reached that. I don't want to say it's the, and I don't well, know how the hell we ended up here, uh, the pornification of our society. <laughs> But but you're right because oh, technolo- technology oh, has permitted the this fortification. Yes, oh, we've talked best. about that before. And porn is not just sexual porn. Let's, no, let's, no. let's define no, no. that. But, but, uh, but I think that's the first time we've used that word though. Yeah, I thought we've talked about that before. That's, that's awesome. No, it, it really so, is because it, we've become a visual oriented. We have. Well, not but, just but, that. But I mean, take, well, that, take for example the idea of right now in colleges and high schools. Uh, so this is a perfect example. At the college level, one of the newest things that's being taught and is considered a sport now is Sports. electronic gaming. Yes. And, yeah, and the watching of that. That is a demand-oriented issue. Oh, yeah. Issue. People pay, pay mail, millions to watch that. Well, or, for, or for the idea of... Uh, uh, flying drones and drone racing flying. Yeah. Sure. And this is not that far from the... 
the fascination we had with Texas Hold'em and other uh, gambling yes. forms. Well, that was a few years in ago. In many ways, things like that is no different than uh, uh, falconing or yes. fox hunting. And sure. things like it's, that. it's a bottom it's of an issue. Interest, it's an industry unto its own. Yes. But this just goes, goes, it plays right into what I was saying about Dewey and my problem with how he does education. Bring it on. Preach it on. Is that, see this. It's that extreme specialization. It's exactly uh-huh. the so, ultimate, this is where this has to end. So all those young women yes. on OnlyFans, they have extremely specialized into, and there are men that do it as and well. There are men, yes. Um, obviously, well, OnlyFans is not just porn. It's right, right. They, there's a lot of different things, but all of those those uh, streamers on Twitch, mm-hmm. they have exactly. specialized in one certain area that is absolutely useless Completely. anywhere else. As far as it advancing anything, anything. in society, anything. Or, well, society yeah. or more importantly, themselves. Right, yeah. because there's no skills st- involved. Well, no, well, there's skills. There's well, skills. There's skills. We're going to go down a rabbit hole right. real quick if we're not careful here. Right. But well, no, but I mean, there are skills because you have to know how to present it. you got to know yes. how to sell it. Yeah, you do, but you ultimately... you got to play the game, it, it both is, literally and figuratively. It is the raw materials that determines whether or not you're in the industry or yes. not. No, 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 well, no, no, no. Because no. If, if the internet has taught us anything, <laughs> is that there's somebody out there for everybody. Yes. And that okay. you are somebody's type. Okay, yeah. so that's great. So, mean only fans... For somebody that's four hundred pounds and has, you know, that is anybody else looking. Like, Be oh careful. We, but we're audio only, but we're creating images and all this sort of stuff. Yeah. Okay, so but, I mean, you know, or you know, that has this this fetish for you know surfboards and monkeys. You know, there is an audience for that it, somewhere. Yeah, yeah, if you've thought of it, there's, there's already an somebody out there. So therein to lies to the only genius in this in this particular milieu. There's your word again. Is yeah, whoever came up with the idea of OnlyFans? Well. No, well, uh, well maybe. Whoever monetized that. Whoever monetized that's what I mean. That's what I'm yeah. talking about. But, my, but that's my problem with this, is that there's twofold. Because I have one thing I want to, I, I know we're probably coming, yeah, we're right well, at right time. time. So let's, so let's we'll I've got a last summary here, here that, that I think it, it, it's kind of my thing with how I've been doing with philosophers. So this extreme <laughs> narrow focus is uh-huh. bad in a lot of ways. It's bad for the person, it's mm-hmm. bad for society. Right. And I don't mean, just mean the only. And Dewey would have not have seen that. <laughs> he would not have seen no. that that's, this because that us. again, that's the industrialization yes. of right. humanity, not just education. That's right. And this is my problem with with him for the philosophy. We, we all love the idea that people have a say in their governance and uh-huh. what goes on around. That's them. right. That's he the was democracy. A, he was right? a rabid we, democratist. We love that idea. Yes. Now we recognize that one, we have neither the time nor the inclination to educate ourselves on every single yes. issue that comes up, right? right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's damn near impossible then, much less today. Yes. Yeah. That's where Dewey's own philosophy is at odds with his ideals. Mm-hmm. Yes. Because yes. if you are specialized, yeah. if you are the expert, how are you going to continually improve yourself enough yeah. to learn all the things you need to know to be able to vote on everything? Exactly. And have because, that voice yeah. in a pure democracy. Because in the it voting arena... It flies in the face of what he wants. Because the voting arena by itself is a generalization. Yes. Yeah. Well, how we do it today it is. It, it is. But yeah. in his ideal, where you know we always vote on what's oh, for yeah. dinner. Yeah. We always vote on you whether or not we all go to war. Yeah. Or you know, from those two and extremes. He was a pro, he was actually a pro-World War I uh Individual, he was pro war. Yeah, that's yeah. that's very. That just shows where he came from. Well, back yeah. then, though, up up to World War Two, mm-hmm. most people would have, you know, it's like, okay, yeah, there's a war. It's a good cause. Let's go ahead and but fight it. It's the Kitchener method. It's kind yeah. of that's but, my words for it. Today. But you, you you must do this. Of course, yeah. you do this. Exactly. The man but, of honor does yeah. this. Blah blah blah. Yes, that's especially yeah. true for World War One. Right. Yeah. Uh, World, World War Two. Well, World War Two was, you know, that wasn't until we got hit. Well, yes. Yeah, from our perspective, yeah, a lot because a lot of the U.S. Wanted everybody, to stay out. everybody wanted to stay out. Uh, yeah, and you had a number of people supporting the Nazis. That's true. Uh, Which is both in they government and in the, in the industry. Right. Well, you know, early on, yeah, it nobody really understood the true depth of the evil there. Yeah, because it was a lot harder to get well, that right. information. Some of Theodore Roosevelt's uh, Theodore Roosevelt's daughter actually mm-hmm. accused Franklin Roosevelt. Uh, I'd rather vote for Hitler than I would for him. This yeah. is the thirties. Right. And, and of course, that sounds absolutely abhorrent to us today. Yeah, but at the time, but it was, at the time, it was rather popular. because it wasn't understood. Yeah, it was you know because the truth he's he a was, Democrat, yeah, we're yeah. a Republican. We're going to say he's the devil, which is what well, we've discussed well, many yeah. times. Yeah. But and and also racism and that kind of stuff was much more 
prevalent. Very much well, so. Well, yes. Yeah. And we've talked about In this In the United many States, times it, was, it was black versus white, but well, it was also... It was still it, very socially acceptable to say talk about the Jews. That's yeah. correct. Or, That's what I was going to say. Especially yeah. in the European yeah. milieu. I'm well, I mean, just using here, word well, everywhere today. Well, I mean, look at look at here in Louisville alone. You had the the anti-Catholic sentiment, the burning of the churches know and stuff. Yes. Well, absolutely. In the 1850s, 1850s it was, yeah. you know, they're, they're, they're breaking down St. Church Martin stores. Tours Church yes. on Shelby Street. Uh, because of that, it was exactly. you know, the black, uh, and, it's not Black so it's, Tuesday, but I can't remember what it turned out to be. And, and what you get with, and, and I think that's one of the things we're heading towards again Ooh. with all of this segmentation. It's the specialization. It's, it's specialization that narrow people, focus Which on ultimately leads to tribalism? Yes. Yes. Okay, yes. there it we go. Hand okay. hand with it. It does. Yes. Right. It because if you're, only, if you're only about one thing, mm-hmm. then you must be... It's easy to push you against the other who exactly. is not about that one thing. And so what, therefore, what you end up with is propagandists in the government using that to control you. Yeah. That's correct. Yeah, because and your attitude. Because as long as you've got somebody else to fight that's different from you, yes. they yes. play into the tribalism aspect that is still in our DNA. Yes, that See, keeps us distracted mm-hmm. and controlled. Well, Dewey has a lot of good things to say about learning. Mm-hmm. Yeah, his preferred. Not just method, but focus. How you should go about what you study, right? Mm-hmm. And how deep you should go on it is antithetical to his political mm-hmm. ideals. Was he naive? And it, was he and naive gar- politically? I think so. I think so. I'm, I'm I think not hearing thing. that. His what you're educational saying. outlook mm-hmm. guarantees the failure of his political ideals. It yeah. absolutely guarantees. Mm-hmm. That's, right. that's a very good summation. That's Robert. exactly. That's very a great place where we. I, I want to try to. End it. I had no idea where the hell we were going to go with this because we didn't go anywhere like I thought we would. We never do. We yeah. never do. But before I turn it over to you for what's next, right, Francis? I want to give a major shout out to Marcus Aurelius and his Vans tennis shoes. Oh, oh, really? I had. I, I, had, I, had, I have been wearing these since the late seventies. I, I remember those. Yeah. Uh, no, they they look like I've been wearing yes. them since the seventies. But uh, uh, that, that's uh, uh, my, my farm has 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 sullied my shoes. Uh, no, they look yeah. thinner than they did than the pair you had in college. I think. Well, yeah, probably. I was going to say because I remember uh, these. But they talk about yeah. someone being true to himself. Yes. Fully integrated. Yes. yes. Integrity. I mean, uh, yes. Well, yes. Once I find something that I like, I tend to stay with it. That's, that's probably, very old man of you, though. That, yes, that, it is. I was thinking, okay, Boomer. That's yeah. probably why I've been married for 32 yeah. years. That's Ooh. correct. You predate the rest of us. That's yes, right, Because you and your wife were at my wedding. Yes. And yes. she was enormously pregnant. Yeah, she was like yes. 13 months pregnant. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. Very much so. Because yeah. when we watch but, the wedding videos occasionally, we look at it and say, oh, the poor Victoria. Oh, my, oh my God. God. It was so hot. Misery. Because it's in the middle of June. And yeah. you can just End see this. Yes, yeah, exactly. And it's you can just Literally see that well, she's I mean, suffering. Well, she gave she gave birth in August, right? So. And she because she's sitting the whole time. Yeah. Every yes. once in a while, the camera would pan to her. It's like, oh my that god. That church was not particularly cool that day. No. It was the it's the reception usually that I'm thinking right. is the one that is the video I'm seeing of her oh, yes, of where yes. she's sitting off by herself. Because uh, we were doing whatever yeah. we were yes. doing, and uh, and she's just trying to open like, up a bottle of champagne and that's failing miserably. Well, <laughs> well, failing now, failing that's miserably. another one. That's exactly I, right. Now, I, I do have a suggestion for you all. With oh, helping, please! With helping to monetize this, perhaps, and we are not and doing pay, the only fans. And channel. pay for the uh, pay for the bourbon. No, 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 no. Considering the language used in this episode of your podcast, have you all ever considered setting up an account with Amazon? Blinking to a thesaurus. <laughs> we could do this. To get, to get a percentage back. <laughs> we could do this. Yes, because we are a living thesaurus yeah. here. Yeah. Oh Look at how well that we awesome. use this language. All of us blending oh. together to that. The, that is awesome, the, the colorful use of language. That's, right. Yeah, and, and, and not inappropriately at all. It was. No, well, we, I don't know about we that. Do the, well, accurate. Uh, it's very <laughs> rare that we have. You know, I mean, yes, we have. A, we drop the occasional uh, dam in the hell. Oh, that's, uh, that's okay. Yeah, that's, yeah, we've, we've, we've only ever dropped that. the F bomb twice. Once right. was accidental, once was intentional. Right. That's yeah. correct. He got not bleeped out, and I did get bleeped out. Well, that's uh, because I couldn't think of any other way to, to make that statement. Well, it's something, it happens. It happens. Yeah, I just kind of blew it out. You know, yeah. Because, uh, yeah. I mean, I said it. And Martin almost has a heart attack. My God, he said the F bomb here. Yes. 
Uh, well, well after well. they told me to restrain myself. Yeah. Well, we were worried about him. Wouldn't let me use douchebag. And then they said, oh, no, it's okay. Well, well, no. I mean, well, that's like one of the things I love, having a granddaughter, is I was she was sitting playing a, an educational game on her tablet. Yeah. And something went wrong. Damn it! <laughs> what the hell's going on here? Uh, you know, and all this... And, and that's this, her, not him. That's, <laughs> her, that's right. That's right. That's a quotation here. That's a quotation. At three, and, right? No, no. She is now five. Five. Okay. okay. And uh, so, yes, she has a little bit of attitude, but the well, language. Gee, imagine that. Yeah, it, but she, she has, comes by honestly. She that's right. Yeah. Well, I mean, one of my favorites is a, a story my wife just told me. She was at school and screwing around in the bathroom like little kids do, and. When a teacher went in to get her out, her, her friend, she I got don't know where this is going, no, but I'm just seeing it's no, going to no, be bad. No, 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 no. She got an attitude with the Ooh. teacher. Uh oh. So she got a card. Apparently, they have cards. Yeah, yeah. Colors. Mm-hmm. And so she was grounded when like she was. Like soccer, she yeah. had a yellow card or a red uh, card. Yeah, exactly. Something like that, yeah. Uh, so when she was going to come over to my son's, she was grounded from her tablet and what have you. So her mother, when she got home, was explaining. You're grounded from this, you're grounded from that, you're grounded for this. And she apparently looked directly into her mother's eyes and said, Are you going to feed me? <laughs> oh. This at five. At five. That's okay. <laughs> well, she understands the concept of punitive action. It and and like. sarcasm. I was going to say sarcasm. Sarcasm. Yeah, sarcasm. 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 Just just right. off of this. We're, we're, we're way past yeah. time yeah, yeah, here. Yeah. We're way past time What's here. next let's, time, let's man? I'm... Well, you know, we're going to, as we've been doing here lately, with our new format where we drop twice a month, uh, the second and the fourth Fridays. Not a deuce. He means we drop. Yes, I understand. Know, That's just right. making yeah. sure because, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, we're going to talk, we're going to continue the discussion about Thomas, uh, excuse me, John Dewey, uh, and with his Code quotation, of Code of Honor quotations next time here. So join us as we continue mm-hmm. to delve deeply in this last of our philosophers' episodes. Mm-hmm. For now. Hope you enjoyed another pointless discussion of eternal questions. Remember, new episodes drop every second and fourth Friday at 6 a.m. Eastern. Spread the word. We're on all the major podcast platforms. And leave us a review. That helps others find us. We're on Instagram, Twitter, as well as our website, snakesandotters.com. I'm Martin. And I'm Robert. And I'm Francis. Join us next time.